dear students in this screencast lecture we are going to see about the rhizosphere already you have had a some information about rhizosphere in the previous lecture of the phytosphere so the term rhizosphere was first coined by lorenz hiltner actually it discusses about the plant root interface this word is basically originating from the greek word rhiza meaning root Hiltner described the rhizosphere as an area around a plant root that is inhabited by a unique population of microorganism actually these microorganisms are influenced by the chemicals that have been released from the plant roots this rhizosphere definition has further refined in the further decades and it has been referred as a three zones that includes endorhizosphere rhizoplane and ectorhizosphere So endorhizosphere it is a portion of the cortex as well as endodermis in which microbes and cations can occupy the free space that have been present within the cells are referred as a apoplast region the next one is rhizoplane it is a medial zone directly adjacent to the root including the root epidermis as well as mucilage so you can able to see the rhizoplane region that have been present in association with the endorhizosphere on one side and ectorhizosphere on the other side and the third region is ectorhizosphere which refers to the outermost zone that extends from the rhizoplane out to the bulk soil so all these things have been very clearly visible there in this diagram you can able to see the rhizosphere that comprises of three different zone the outermost ectorhizosphere and the inner one as of a rhizoplane and the innermost region in which the apoplast or the different kinds of cells that is cortex and the endodermis occupy are referred as a endorhizosphere now we look at the properties of the rhizosphere the points i am explaining here are all already explained there in the phytosphere also so the first point is high available carbon facilitating the microbial growth in this region higher the microbial population and activity that is the various enzyme activity of the microbes will be high there in the rhizosphere when compare the ph of the rhizosphere region it will be always lower through some experiment they have proved that the low ph of the rhizosphere that is through visualization they will be adding certain dyes which gives the color when it is in a highly acidic condition so it show a lower ph than that of the bulk soil and lower the oxygen level always there in rhizosphere whereas higher the carbon dioxide compared to that of the bulk soil this is also again due to the reason that microbial respiration there that is they consume lot of oxygen at the same time they are leaving a lot of carbon dioxide through their respiration process although the nutrient availability will be present there in the rhizosphere say for example phosphorus may be mobilized by the microorganism at may and it may be easily available for the plants to get taken up now we look at into some points to know how the rhizosphere region is influenced there by the microorganism that is microbial population increase are all mediated by supply of carbon there so there comes a point that plant species have been estimated that their roots can able to release anywhere between a 10 to 250 mg of carbon per gram of root or 10 to 40 percentage of the photosynthetically fixed carbon can be released from the root as root exudates the carbon that is released belongs to both organic that is low molecular weight organic acids will be abundant or sometime they may be containing inorganic component that is bicarbonate that is resulted due to the respiration compared to inorganic form the organic forms are more varied and they can able to influence the chemical physical and biological process of the rhizosphere region the composition and the amount of the exudates that are getting released from a plant may depend on different factors such as plant type climatic conditions insect herbivory nutrient deficiency or toxicity and chemical physical and biological properties of the soil that is surrounding the plant system the root products that are imparted there to the surrounding soil are generally termed as rhizo deposits the rhizo deposits are classified based on their chemical composition mode of release or the function they perform there in the environment they can be slugged off root capsules border cells mucilages 
and exudates. So, this is a rhizosphere image in which you can able to see the different kinds of rhizo deposits. Say for example, the first one refers to loss of root cap as well as the border cells. The second one refers to loss of insoluble mucilaginous substances from the plant roots. And the third one refers to loss of soluble root exudates. Fourth refers to the volatile organic carbon compounds that have been released there from the root system. The fifth one refers to loss of carbon to the other symbionts, say for example certain azospirillum that may be living there or a mycorrhizal association present there in the surface. And finally, the sixth one refers to the loss of carbon due to death or lysis of the root epidermal cells. The carbon compounds that have been originating there from the plant roots can be divided into four forms. That includes exudates, secretions, lysates and mucilages. Exudates refers to compound that are slowly oozing directly from the epidermal cell walls into the soil or oozing indirectly into the intercellular spaces of the plant root system and then into the soil. Whereas the secretion refers to compounds that are released as a result of metabolic processes. This includes both low molecular weight whereas high molecular weight compounds. Lysates which we have already seen which includes the slugged off cells and when epidermal cells are damaged and autolyzed the lysates will be reaching there into the soil system. Mucilages also we have already seen the explanation. You can just list the various carbon compounds that have been originating there from the plant roots. This includes a list of organic compounds that have been detected there in the plant root exudates. They include sugar, sugar alcohol, sugar phosphate, amino acid, even different kinds of organic acid. You can just list the class and give one or few examples that will be enough. Nucleotides, purines and peptides, fatty acids, inorganics also could be present that includes a nitrate, phosphate and sulphate. Various enzymes that includes amylase, invertase, oxidase, phenolase and even polygalactronase. These are all the various enzymes that could be present there. And finally, a lot of growth factors or vitamins could be present there in this region. Then sterols, some specific plant related sterols such as a cholesterol, campus sterol, and stigma sterol are all will be present in a huge amount. Then flavonoids, this flavonoid includes certain compounds that can able to attract the microorganism there nearer to the root surface. Say for example, flavonones, and flavonones and flavanols are commonly used there in the rhizobium legume interaction. Now, we look at some points related to the bacteria and fungi that are the dominant group of microorganisms that have been living there in the rhizosphere. Bacteria including actinomyces are the numerous inhabitants there in the rhizosphere. Typically, their numbers will be around 10 power 6 to 10 power 9 cells per gram of rhizosphere soil. The dominant bacterial phyla found in the rhizosphere includes proteobacteria, actinobacteria, acidobacteria, bacteroidetes, firmicutes as well as chlorofluxy, gematimonidates and planktomyces. In generally, non-sporulating rod shaped organism are abundant there in the rhizosphere, mainly pseudomonads and other gram negative proteobacteria are especially competitive there in the rhizosphere and typically they occupy a large portion of the bacterial population there in the root and rhizosphere region. Apart from proteobacteria, actinobacteria is one of the another important groups that occupies about 10 to 30 percent there among the total microflora of the rhizosphere region. Next to bacteria, the most abundant organism present there in the rhizosphere is fungi. But their population are generally lesser compared to that of the bacteria. They are commonly countered through spores or mycelial propagules that occur there. Sometimes this may be a misrepresentation there in the counting also. So, a direct microscopy clearly shows the growth of fungi there on the root surfaces. The fungal hyphae production is 12 to 14 millimeter of hyphae may be produced per millimeter of a root length. Population abundance when compared to the bacteria are they are having commonly 10 to 20 percentage and 10 power 5 to 10 power 6 propagules of fungi may be present there in a gram of rhizosphere soil. The predominant fungi that may be represented there in the rhizosphere includes members of Ascomycota, Basidiomycota, Zygomycota 
and several rhizosphere innovating fungi can be of two types one may be of a pathogenic in nature or they may be of a saprophytic nutrition in nature some other groups that includes the symbiotic fungi mainly mycorrhizal association found associated there with the roots